Coming up today on Houston Life, from the gridiron to the drawing board, how a former Texans player went from dominating the field to designing furniture. We'll hear the love story behind the Houston-based business. Plus, need an escape from the big city, from tasting rooms to museums, the small town offering the perfect getaway to stay, eat, and play. And do you need some help packing those back-to-school lunches? We've got a kid-approved formula for balanced lunches that are both tasty and and more importantly, nutritious. Plus, it's the perfect time to bring home a new furry friend where you can find all of those cuties waiting for you as we celebrate National Dog Day. All of that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, August 26, 2021, also known as Friday Eve. I'm Derek Shore. Baby Friday, whatever you need to get through this day, right? I'm Courtney Savala. We also have Tex here. He was just taking a snoozer because he's been very popular today. Everybody wants a few more puppy kisses and belly rubs. It's International Dog Day. International Dog Day. And if you've checked out the KPRC2 or the Houston Life Twitter page, Facebook, Instagram, we've been showing Tex some love. Hard to believe we've had him now for three years. I can't believe this little stuffed sausage we've had for three years. He is so cute. You're He's... talking about me or the dog? <laughs> The dog. <laughs> okay, because I've been here five years. <laughs> he is so cute. Sometimes he can't be bothered. Ooh, let's get the logo off your nose. There you go. Everyone cute. see your cute face. <laughs> cute baby. I know. And um, I had a lot of fun giving Oscar a few extra snuggles and hugs today, too. Uh, we think we have some pictures. Of, you know, we do our two to three mile walks every day. Can you believe that this dog has brought so much joy to my life? So much joy. And you were sort of like not really a dog person until Oscar came into your life. What do you think changed? I guess because he was around all the time. Look at that face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is so cute. He is super sweet. He's a good boy and he's always at my feet. Um, and we go on our two to three mile walks every day. He sees me get my sh my socks and he's re he's ready to go. He knows what's about to happen. Well, it was fun having Oscar in studio a few weeks ago with Stephanie Bennett, who's Oscar's trainer and Texas trainer. Interesting to see oh. Tex interact with other dogs too because he's really calm usually. He gets excited and runs around the building. Yeah. But every once in a while, while he will bark. Which is super weird. We all think, like, what's happening? Typically, it's when his boss is on, like, a Zoom. His boss <laughs> is on a Zoom call. <laughs> his boss. <laughs> okay. If or his dad. If, if some employees in the building are on Zoom calls and you hear someone's dog barking in the background, Tex will sometimes jump up and run and bark. So anyway, <laughs> we did ask you to send some of your dog pictures to our Facebook page. I think we should share some of them, Courtney. Let's get to it. Here's a few. We have Rex enjoying a puppy Sunday at the burger joint, one of our favorite places. Aww. Oscar loves it there, too. Look at Rex enjoying Look that. Look at that sweet face. I love his eyebrows. So cute. His, I just want to boop his nose. <laughs> Tippy sent in her dog, oh. Louie. She says he's the laziest dog ever. What made you say that? I think he's just sleepy. <laughs> he just likes it. Look at that face and the little little tufts of hair. I mean, everybody needs a dog days of summer. And check out Dino, the bulldog, Ugh. sent in by Creative Contessa Designs. That uh, is so cute. Adorable. So adorable. OK, let's keep it going. Here's Debbie's dog, Penelope Cruz. Oh who is Stop. enjoying a day with the cows. I think that is so sweet. Uh, adorable. And I love that her name is Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Looks just like her. Is she? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really. Penelope's beautiful, but I love that name. I don't know why I said that. That was silly. But how cute is she? Penelope Cruz. She is very, very cute. Adorable. She is adorable. Please, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> please keep your photos coming. I, I swear. I could look at dog photos all day and all night. Well, and so on Instagram, Courtney and I send each other puppy posts all the time. Puppies riding scooters, puppies eating pickles, puppy, I mean. Puppies in spa time. We can't get enough. That's all that's in my feed when I go to the search button. It's either Starbucks or puppies. <laughs> that's it. That's all that's in there. <laughs> Well, listen, we uh, we do look forward to seeing more of your puppy photos on this International Dog Day, but I feel like 
a shout out is in order. Happy birthday to Reagan Bregman. Yes. Of course, Alex Bregman's wife. They've appeared here on Houston Life. Before they were married, COVID sort of changed their wedding plans, but what a great day to celebrate a birthday on the heels of last night's big game. Oh, big win. And of course, Bregman returned um, to the lineup, which was great to see him too. And by the way, in extra innings, uh, the Astros pulled out the big win. Of course, Jake Myers with his walk-off, but Alex Bregman scored the winning run. So awesome game yesterday and good to see him back. Yeah, for Some sure. Swagger in the dugout. For well, sure. so congrats to Alex and the entire Astros team and happy birthday to his wife. Reagan. That's that right. Fantastic. All right. So uh, what do we have going on? Do we have some topics for today? I think so. Okay. So this is really interesting. I know you just moved into your house. You were looking at sort of window treatments and oh, blinds yeah. and all of that stuff. And I know it's sort of like, it's something that kind of never ends, but did you get your blinds? Window treatments are for anyone who's ever shot for window treatments. It's a pain because at our last house, we did it all ourselves. We measured, we ordered them online. Did the same. Yeah. Which, you know, goes pretty well until you try to mount them and you destroy your walls. Um, but we, yeah, we ended up going with just like regular shades. I used to have those wood blinds, but I know, um, you know, wood blinds, sometimes they're not so private. If you point them in, you want to get a you little like bit of light. like a shutter or something? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. We have blinds in our house and great natural light, but I close everything at night. And then in the morning, I, you know, click them open, get the light going. Well, every now and then, Orlando will open up just one blind going the wrong direction. One blind? Oh, so he can see out? But it's the wrong direction. So these are like the two inch wood blinds, right? Yes. So he just takes one and... And just kind of so flips he, it. So he can see out. And I walk by and tick, flip it the other way because it's not right. Do you know like up or down how this the blinds go? So this is an article on mental floss. I love these guys because it's super fun. Um, should the blinds be facing up or down? Face up is harder for people to see in, keeps the room cooler, face down, neater in appearance, lets sunlight leak in, and warms the room. Are you up or are you down? Where are you? What team? Blinds up or blinds down? Well, it depends. If you have house plants and you need a little bit of light, the wood blinds don't let enough light in. But if you just pop them open just a little bit at night, let's say at night you are closing down the house, you're going to bed. Then I would make them face down outside like down. But no, but you're walking past, so inside they're up? So inside they would be up and outside oh, no, they would never. be down. Mm -mm. But no. at night? But then when you turn the lights on, if someone walks by, they can see in because they can see down. Well, if anybody's walking up that closely to my windows, there's a problem, A. I don't like the way it looks. I, I can't go up, it's gotta go down. There are a lot of city houses in Houston. I mean, in Houston, we have a lot of very vertical townhome style homes, totally. right? And so Still, people, People's homes might be close to the sidewalk. And so if the blinds are pointing in, then they can see in. I think you really can see in. I don't think so. We're going to test this out. Okay. I am going to... Blinds down. Peek in blinds all over the city tonight. <laughs> Just ignore him. It's for a science project. Don't it's worry. totally fine. It's my job. <laughs> all right. Still to come. Smells like a lawsuit. Does that sound familiar? The popular, uh, the battle over a popular 90s album cover. Let's see if you can name the song. Okay, that's come a back. good hint. But first, let's check in with Joe Sam, who's hanging out with some pretty adorable pups who are looking for a home. Hey, Joe. Hey guys, yeah, you're right about that. When we talk about the adorable factor, look at this who we have here, Graham. He's just enjoying some hot dogs. He's looking to see if I have any in my hand. We're gonna be talking about how you can actually adopt Graham and the other pets that you can adopt here at Friends for Life when we come back on Houston Life. We'll be right back. Aww. Okay, welcome back. Before the break, I made a reference to a song, sort of. Mm -hmm. Smells like a lawsuit, uh -huh. 90s band, more like grunge rock. Do you know what we're talking about? Well, yes. He already looked it up. But prior to looking it up, did you know what we were talking about? No, I, I mean about the Nirvana cover controversy. What's the song? Where's the song? No? I don't know. Smells like Team Spirit. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it's a 30-year-old man he was that naked baby on the cover of Nirvana's Nevermind album. You mm -hmm. got, it's iconic. Yeah, the baby swimming, naked in the water, chasing a dollar bill. Well, he's now suing the band and others, alleging that this image taken 30 years ago is child pornography. He was on the cover at four months old in 1991. 
The lawsuit says that he suffered, quote, lifelong damages. And um, I guess that's him. Is that him in the video, right? With uh, Kurt maybe. Cobain, the late Kurt Cobain right there. What's interesting, though, is this guy has done a bunch of interviews over the years. Over the and, years. And recreations, wearing swim trunks, of, of yes. course. Yes. Of that same image. And now he's suing more than a dozen people, including the record label. Exactly. And originally his parents, I guess, were um, paid $200 for that image back in the day for that album cover. But now he's saying that he has suffered lifelong damages. And at $150,000 per person he's suing with more than a dozen people being sued. I mean, that's a few million bucks right there. I know, okay. I know. Full article though, go check it out on clicktohouston.com for more info. And just seeing those images of Kurt Cobain and that video of the band, Wow, 90s flashback, big time. Yeah, for sure. Well, as a child, he probably had no choice to do that photo. I'm assuming this was his parents' choice. Why don't we bring in Lauren Kelly with today's question of the day. Hey, Lauren. Hey, guys. We want to hear from you from bowl cut haircuts <laughs> to matching outfits. Yep, check, check, check. What's something that you wish your parents hadn't made you do? We've already got some great answers coming in. Let's first start off with Jacqueline. Jacqueline writes in, teased out my hair. I had Aww. big hair in kindergarten. Oh, wow. That's pretty early <laughs> Adam writes in matching outfits for my brother and I when we were babies. I think that that's quite common, right? And finally, Tina writes in, we had to hug and kiss when we were fighting the worst ever. That's like that thing on social media. It's like the hug jacket where it's just one, like almost like a straight jacket that parents put their fighting children in. It's really funny. You should look it up. Head over to the Houston Live Facebook page and join the conversation. Of course, we're going to share more of your comments a little bit later on. Derek and Courtney, I know that you might not have done the magic out, uh, matching outfits thing, but what did your parents make you do that you hated? My mom definitely put my brothers in matching outfits because yeah. they were so close in yeah. age. So um, cute. I mean, you know, totally funny. I just think, like, I just had awful hair situations. <laughs> awful hair situations going my entire because life. Because of your mom or you wish she had intervened? I'm going to blame it on her. <laughs> How could she have ever let me out of the house like that? That is the constant question that I ask my mother as well, Courtney. I'm just so mortified when I look back at those photos. Well, it was like, probably a hair thing, too, because my mom never wanted me to cut it short. So I had this long <laughs> bush on my head. <laughs> and she would say, honey, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> She's the beautiful only one saying it's beautiful. Exactly what I was going for. I wanted to have a buzz cut, and I oh. couldn't get the buzz cut until I could do it myself. Do we have any adult. photos? Do we have any photos? Well, I finally buzzed it. I think we might have a photo of me Maybe as that's an adult later. with a buzz cut, but we'll show that when we get to it. That's a tease for later. Don't go anywhere. We're going to share more of those photos. And speaking of photos, we do have a photo of your puppy. Oh, or... you know what? It takes a day, a national day, to show these girls oh, off. Look at so that. So cute. Minnie and Zoe, that is how they currently sit every single day. I love that Minnie does the, the horseback riding. It is so, it's like hysterical. I mean, I don't know how she does it, and Zoe just So cute. Her. And Zoe's like, whatever. I've never yeah. seen dogs do that before. <laughs> Very cute. Happy International Thank Dog you Day so day. much. Same to you guys. And thanks for the comments. We'll see you <laughs> sure. in a minute. Well, as we've mentioned by now, it is International Dog Day, and we are celebrating by helping some pups find their forever homes. And Friends for Life has a wide and extremely cute selection. Joe Sam is hanging out with a couple of those pups ready to be adopted. Hey, Joe. Hey, Graham. Go back to your spot. Hey, guys. Yeah, you're right about that when we talk about extremely cute. You can check them out right now. We have Graham down here, and we have Titus here. Look, he's ready for his TV debut. He has his little bow tie on. He's ready to present, and these are dogs that actually like hot dogs, too. So, I mean, they just chop them right on up. <laughs> Look at that there. So we're going to talk about Graham first, Jennifer, who's with Friends for Life. Tell us a little bit about Graham and how we can get him adopted. So Graham's about five years old. He currently lives in a foster home. Um, he came to us um, about, I don't know, a little, a few <laughs> months ago, um, but he is available for adoption. Absolutely, and then Titus here as well. He's looking ready to go. He yes. has his bow tie on. He's ready to join a new family, right? Titus is. He's about 12 years old. He's a senior, so he is looking for somewhere to retire. Absolutely, he's looking for these, these treats too. Yes. So as we yes. talk about that, tell people about the process really quickly about Absolutely. how they can get Adopt, and then we also have some other pets that we're going to show some video of that are also looking for a forever home. Yeah, so we have an adoption application online. People can go to friends the number four life.org and there's a big button at the top that says adopt. You can browse the animals there. So we've got a ton of dogs and cats in our program. Uh, I know it's National Dog Day, so and then after <laughs> right. that, we do an interview and a sleepover and 
see if it works out. Absolutely. They are behaving themselves really, really well. I think it's because we have these hot dogs on deck. So. When we come back, you guys are going to be talking about some of the other animals that they have up for adoption right now. It's really, really important that we find them forever home because there are so many around here in Houston that are looking for that caring family that's going to welcome them in with big, loving arms. Yeah. And I mean, you can't turn them down. Look at how cute they are. Mm. Courtney and Derek, they are just giving it to me here. I'm going to continue giving them some hot dogs so that they can be happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> Look right. at Titus. He's eating it up. <laughs> Sounds good, Joe. Thanks. <laughs> All right. When we come back, pack your bags and throw on some sunglasses because we've got your itinerary ready for your next Texas road trip. Plus, well, the story of how former NFL player Daryl Sharpton and his wife, Jessica, teamed up to create beautiful pieces for the home. Houston Life will be right back. Well, if you've been longing for an adventure, the fall season might be the perfect time to hit the road and be on your way to a small town charm. First stop, of course, Fredericksburg, here with more on how you can soak in the beauty of the Texas Hill Country as Director of Communications for Fredericksburg Convention and Visitor Bureau, Amanda Kuhn. It's great to see you. Yes, it's so great to be back. I know, it's been a long time, like 18 months since we've seen you in studio, so it's great to have you here. Let's talk about the fall season in Fredericksburg because it's weather it's also the grape harvest season there's so much to do yes fall is the perfect time to visit Fredericksburg you know cooler temps I know here in Houston it's still a little spicy <laughs> um, but really in, in Fredericksburg the humidity is low the breeze is beautiful and we're already enjoying some cooler temps so what better time to get on the road absolutely and the, the town is so beautiful and quaint everybody's doing road trips now so why not do run right up to Fredericksburg plus it's the perfect time to enjoy what 50 plus wineries yes yeah, so grape harvest season is going on now and it's a great time to come and visit the 50 plus vineries vineries wineries vineyards and tasting rooms just all the great wine in Texas wine country. So with it being grape harvest, is that something that we can take part in too, or you kind of smell it as soon as you get into town, right? It is quite magical. So if you really want to get hands on, you can go grape stomping. We have grape stomping events at various vineyards, or you can just sit back and enjoy the view at a winery. I love it. And what I love about Fredericksburg too, is it's so quaint, so pretty. Um, and let's talk about the places to stay. So from bed and breakfast, I mean, really you have so many options there. Yes. it's. You know, one of the great things about Fredericksburg is all of the unique places to stay. From ranches to guest house to just a home in town or a loft, there's such a variety that wherever you pick, you feel like you're at your own little home. And by the way, speaking of your own little home, there's lots of vacation rentals too. Yes, about 1,500 actually. That's incredible. <laughs> you can find something to love from cabins, homes, etc. Also the hotels and, and motels. Mm -hmm. um, you can't forget and we can't ignore the views of the Texas Hill Country. This is the views are really incredible. Yes, it's just such a stunning time of the year to go hiking in Enchanted Rock or along our other trails. Um, go for a cycle, just really enjoy the great outdoors. And the town is celebrating, what, 175 years young? Yes, it's our birthday. Happy birthday, it never looked better. <laughs> so anything special happening for that? Yes, we actually are doing an entire year of celebration. It started last May and it goes through May of 22. So all around town, you'll find little mementos like this wonderful 175th anniversary wine from a local vineyard and then special events and you can always visit Visit places like our, Nas our National Museum of the Pacific War or Pioneer Museum to learn about history or take a historic walking tour and just enjoy. It's so great and I love the way you kind of describe it too because there's no fast pace no. about Fredericksburg. This is really a stay, relax and do everything kind of like on vacation time if you get what I mean. But you say the pro tip here is to plan ahead. Plan your trip. Yes. Plan ahead. Come midweek. It's got a slower, even more relaxed vibe than you're used to in Fredericksburg and then you just you really can't beat it. You really can. I mean, 80 plus restaurants, of course, the, vin the, the wineries, everything else to do there. It's great stuff. We're going to get out there this fall too. Amanda, it's great to see you. Thanks. Appreciate you being here. Also, we do have a big giveaway to announce. Listen to this. One lucky winner will receive a grand prize for an unforgettable Texas Hill Country experience. It includes a two-night midweek stay for two 
wine tastings, gift certificates, and much more. All you have to do is visit clicktohouston.com slash contests, and there you can enter for a chance to win. The deadline, though, is to enter is September 9th. That's coming up, and good luck. For more inspiration and uh, to start planning your trip, just log on to visit fredericksburgtx.com or give them a call, 830-997-6523. We're going to send things over to Derek, who's standing by with a spotlight on a local business. Hey, Derek. Hey, Courtney. After his career as an NFL linebacker, Daryl Sharpton found a new calling, along with the help of his wife, Jessica. Together, they have teamed up to tackle, get it, the furniture industry by building the national brands Edlow Finch and Albany Park. And it's all done right here in Houston. Hello, I'm Daryl Sharpton, CEO and Head of Product Development at Edlo Finch in Albany Park. I'm Jessica Sharpton. I am Head of Operations at Edlo Finch in Albany Park. So I've always been like a serial entrepreneur from selling unripe grapefruits and passing them off as limes <laughs> to like... Maybe we don't want it to tell okay. us. Okay, maybe not. All right. <laughs> So I started selling a lot of furniture in college and then my furniture dreams kind of got derailed from this other NFL thing I was doing for like five years. And then uh, after I was done playing football, Jessica was like, hey, why don't you just continue doing furniture? You've always talked to me about furniture in college. So uh -huh. um, Albany Park and Edlow Finch came to life. Uh -huh. Yeah. Edlo Finch has bedroom, dining, sofas, coffee tables. It has more of all the furniture pieces that um, we offer, but Albany Park just narrows it straight down to sofas in particular. And I personally designed and engineered the pieces myself. And Jessica makes sure that all the pieces get there <laughs> in pristine condition on time. He loves marketing, product design, and things like that, whereas I'm more in the business side of it, making sure the finances and the logistics side is, is taken care of. So that's where we... Work perfectly. Yeah, yeah we, we psychoanalyze that all the time. Because yeah. we really are yin and yang, but we're both insane. Like Jessica <laughs> said, we're both like super ambitious, yeah. always pushing things to the limit. We're always striving for like five steps further. Right. You know, not just like, what's next? We're like, okay, like, let's push, let's push this to the absolute limit. Yeah. Most date nights are like company retreats, so yeah. <laughs> we're like... It sounds crazy, because normally you want to escape work, but for us, we can like be dying laughing talking about things that are going on with work. Yeah, right. And so even though we like venture into talking about work, we're still like probably laughing the <laughs> loudest out of everyone in the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we love it, so we just, we just go with what feels right. Yeah. yeah. They are adorable, and their product is amazing. I want one of every single Me thing too. we just saw. If you would like <laughs> to connect with Daryl and Jessica, just head to the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. Okay, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who has a throwback Thursday for us. Bring it, girl. I am so excited for this one. Coming up, the cast of Netflix is He's All That. New faces and familiar faces are sharing what to expect from the 90s reboot. Plus, we're going to check of what is coming up for the news at 4 o'clock. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this baby Friday at 3.30. On this International Dog Day as well. Earlier in the show, we asked, what is something you wish your parents had not made you do? Right? <laughs> parents have the best of intentions. Sometimes it doesn't go so well. So Sandra writes in, <laughs> oh my gosh, the home perms. Oh. My mother was a great cook, not so much in the home hair perm. Wow. My mom, if it makes you feel better, gave me two of those home perms. Oh boy, that's neat photos They're for pretty. that. They're Shannon pretty. writes in, I wish my mom didn't make us have this haircut. Oh, she cut our bangs and always got carried carried away with how far back uh, she cut them, oh. like to the temple, you know, past the temple. But what a great photo that is. Oh, so I cute. They all look great. Erica writes in starch Jordache jeans with a crease down the front. You had to basically rip your leg off <laughs> trying to get them on. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes if you have like a, a dry, sometimes Brandon will like dry clean his jeans. I know, but they'll put a crease down the front. That's a rodeo jean. It's yeah it's, yeah, it's a look. It's a formal look. So I think the hair pick is coming. Oh, it's a good one. Okay. Do you know which one? Which, which one's one, me? Are you in this in photo? The, oh my gosh, are you in the middle? Yeah, I mean, look at the hair, Derek. You're in the middle, come on. like 
On the top, on her shoulders, yes. I have no, I can't Seated remember. Seated on her shoulders. Yes. Wow. Look at that hair. Dude. I think that was my mom's attempt for pigtails on the side, but when your hair is more like a chia pet, pigtails don't really work. So that's all your hair. That right is there. all my hair. Are they two buns? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's awful. Okay, mine, um, mine is from about 10 years ago. So this is when I finally did a buzz cut because I never could as a kid. Remember, I had that big bushy thing on my head that my mom loved. It was so pretty. So I finally, as an adult, buzzed my hair off. Should I do it again? Why aren't you wearing a shirt? Was this just right after? Because I had just buzzed it. Okay. What? <laughs> I was in the bathroom. I buzzed my hair. I, I understand. Didn't... It could. You, that could be a good passport photo for you. Can we see that again? No. No. We don't have time for okay. that. Okay. All right. Well, let's check in. See? That's a passport photo. Well, okay. Yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that. <laughs> Let's check in with Andy, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at 4 o'clock. Who needs photo. Matt Damon for those movies? Yeah. We have Derek. A shirtless Derek. Ten years Derek. ago, he doesn't look a day <laughs> older. He looks the same. Oh, you guys both had That was yesterday, hair, Andy. It was yesterday. My hair grows very fast. <laughs> You know, the, you know what they say, though, the, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. Yes. Amen, yeah. sister. You, know, and you were right there, going to church daily. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Multiple times. Oh, my gosh. We all had the bang. I mean, my mom yeah. tried to, you know, save money, and the bangs were like this. Oh, you yeah. know? And I had the feathered hair with the comb in my back pocket. Oh, yes, you right? did. Wow. Yes, you did. Wow. Got Franklin? No, well, I was opposite of Derek. My mother would, would buzz me when I was four or five. I'd just scream. <laughs> You know, oh. to save money. She would do it herself. Yeah. I wanted long hair like the Beatles so badly. Oh, oh yeah. But no, I had a crew I could cut. See Frank so I was... with a mullet, right? No, I never had a mullet. A no? Mullet. No. There's no. still time, Frank. I had hair over my ears. <laughs> I had hair over my ears. Hey, you just showed us your prison picture, so don't get over, I, over on it, me. Now. It did look like a mugshot. I wasn't going to say it either, but it did. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. Get All out right. of the car, sir. I feel like we could go on for this for a while, oh, but yeah. I know, Frank, we got a lot to talk about in terms of the, the weather department. A lot of new, news to talk about, but also yes. our track in the tropics. And we're getting a few storms, too, so let's get to it. You can see this is Tropical Depression 9. In fact, you can see relation to where we are. It is down in the Caribbean. This business here, this is why we're getting these showers today, and we'll see them again, it looks like, tomorrow and into the weekend because that system is pushing through. Out of Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, they got a late start because of those storms, but they're down there now. So hopefully we'll have a little more information for our 4 o'clock advisory, which I will have at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, 35 mile an hour winds, and here's a look at the forecast cone. This puts a Category 1 hurricane in the Gulf Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning, and it takes it toward Louisiana as a Cat 2, top of the scale Cat 2, 110 miles per hour, but it could easily be even stronger than that as it moves into Louisiana. And that looks like the strike point. I know that we're a little bit in the cone here in parts of uh, Texas around Sabine Pass, but Look at these spaghetti models. I tell you, they have really clustered into Louisiana. I mean, you see what I see here. So that's where most of the models are putting the final landfall of the system. Things may change, they always can, but right now it looks like to be a system to our east. In the meantime, 87, rain cooled 82 degree weather southwest. You can see these showers. This is the whole system that's pushing through. So we'll took, uh, take another look at that. But you can see these storms are pushing on in. I think probably till about 8 o'clock we're going to see those, and then we will see them again tomorrow. So I'll have that forecast coming up. In the meantime, 30% for 4, 5, 6, 30% right through 7. If you're going to take that afternoon jog, try to head out to the park. Make sure to check an umbrella just in case. Just in case. Yes. All right. Duly yeah. noted. Yeah. Frank, thanks so much. Here's a look at some of the other stories that we are covering for you this afternoon. Breaking developments in Afghanistan where explosions have killed at least 12 U.S. service members and dozens of Afghans. All of this unfolding outside of the airport where Americans and Afghan allies are supposed to go to be evacuated from the country. President Biden expected to address the nation during the 4 o'clock hour. We, of course, will bring that to you live when it happens. And a developing story in Northwest Harris County where a man suffered critical injuries after being attacked by two dogs. What we're learning from investigators and what neighbors are telling us about the dog. So a lot of big important news coming up at four o'clock today, you guys. Okay, okay guys, we'll, we'll see you then. Okay at the top of the hour. Well, the 1999 iconic teen comedy, She's All That is back. 
Sort of. So He's All That on Netflix is a reimagining of the 1999 hit film, but this time the gender roles are swapped. Lauren Kelly chatted with a cast of the new flick that includes a few familiar faces. Hey, Lauren. That's right, you guys. You're going to recognize actress Rachel Lee Cook from the original She's All That. And for this new film, she's back as the mom of popular social media influencer Paget, played by TikTok star Addison Rae. Paget has a humiliating, uh, humiliating breakup that goes viral, so she makes a bet to save your reputation by turning scruffy antisocial Cameron, played by Cobra Kai's Tanner Buchanan, into, you guessed it, the prom king. We're live here, and surprise, we're on the set of my boyfriend's brand new music video. Jordan! What are you doing? Okay, let's not freak out. What are you doing? We're over, okay? Hey, You're still alive. Oh, shit. Let's jump right into it, Addison. Let's talk about what it was like being involved in such an iconic remake of a movie. Lots of pressure, but so much more excitement. Um, yeah, it, this movie, like you said, iconic. Um, my mom loved this movie. I love this movie. Um, and now getting to do a reimagining of that was so, so, so exciting. I know everyone on the cast was such big fans of the original and being a part of this one. I mean, and having, you know... Rachel and Matthew on it like wow what a crazy thing to even say but like uh yeah I mean incredible so exciting my acting debut which is a dream come true and and I know um it's gonna be amazing well girlfriend you did great you look fabulous on the big screen and of course you look fabulous on the small screen too we all see you on socials <laughs> but Tanner hey fans know you from Cobra Kai we love you on that show but what was it like preparing for a role where you were gonna have to get made over um, it was, it, it was interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's my first time that I spent about, like, three hours in the makeup chair every day. Uh, I was not used to that. <laughs> um, so wait, wait, you must not have any sisters then, right? Uh, no, I'm the only okay. child. I'm the only child. Because <laughs> if you want sisters, they would have for sure, like, done all that stuff with your hair when you were little, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Matthew, are you going to be singing any Rick James? I am not singing Rick James, but... She pointed to the bicep. Um, he didn't, oh, Lauren, he didn't even remember that. I didn't remember that. What? You know, so buff. I said that to my kids, they were not impressed. Rachel, what was it like being back on set with this guy? Oh, man. Matthew Lillard is lights up the life. So not, a, everyone not true. touches. Oh, my God. Lady Boggs is, <laughs> I've been trying to convince her all day. Thank That's you. all I'm saying. Thank you. Forget about Rachel, it. Rachel, Matthew, I am so excited to talk to you today. I know our viewers are going to just love He's All That. Thank you so much for taking this trip down memory lane with me. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. Take it easy. I love those guys. You can catch all the new faces and familiar ones and he's all that as it starts streaming on Netflix tomorrow. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. Very nice. Can't wait to see it. I know. Love a good reboot. Lauren. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Well, coming up, nutritionist Mary Ellen Phipps shares her own one ingredient jam recipe. Very cool. Find out how to make this healthier option your kids will love. That's when Houston Life returns. Back to school, you know, when it comes to packing school lunches for kids, the struggle is real, folks. From finding what they like to keeping it healthy and nutritious, there is so many options to consider. Certainly. And our next guest is taking the guesswork out of it all with her lunchbox formula. Here with How It All Works, registered dietitian and nutritionist, Mary Ellen Phipps. Welcome back to Houston Life. Thank you. It's so good to be in studio. Oh, my goodness. Well, so this is great news for parents. There is actually a formula to make packing a school lunch easier. Yes, and it makes it super simple, takes the guesswork out of it, and allows for variety so you know you're not sending the exact same thing every day but before I give you the formula I want to see what you guys would pack for lunch so we have two lunch boxes there and I thought it'd be fun if we did a quick little lunch box packing competition okay so take about a minute and, and we have some healthy foods and some not so healthy right there's foods, a good right? mix of you can make a really balanced lunch with all this stuff and you can make a not so balanced lunch so okay let's put it to the test okay. I think we have our clock up there and let's get it started okay no let's pressure go for Derek. It. Okay. Okay, okay. now we're ready. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Derek, grab the sandwich. Courtney's going for the walk. Yes, ooh. Another and the goal thing, here is to be balanced, right? Right, to be balanced and also to help your child feel comfortable. So, you know, sending new foods they've never tried, school lunch is probably not the time or place to do that. 
Um, so it's important to send foods that they enjoy, that are balanced, and are going to help fuel their bodies uh, throughout the day. We've got some grapes there. Those are always great and super convenient. Cheese stick. This looks delicious. This is something I would eat. I see all those protein bars over there, but I know they typically contain quite a bit of sugar, so I'm going to steer clear of some that. Some do, some do, yes. Broccoli also has a high level of protein. People don't realize that, right? Green vegetables contain protein. It is, vegetables, yes, they actually do have protein, um, not, not given the credit they deserve sometimes. Okay. okay. Good. I that think, it? you know, for good measure. You're throwing in some grapes? I'm going to put grapes. in some grapes because um, I like them and they keep well. A fun fact, 99% of grapes are grown in California. I oh. didn't know that. I well, didn't know that go. either. Yours looks very good and green. Well, thank you. I picked um, some crackers here, the guacamole, a little sandwich that I believe has peanut butter and jam in it, or jelly, yes. from what I can see. Grapes, almonds, and broccoli. Okay, and then I went with some animal crackers, probably not a great thing there, but some popcorn. I did crackers and broccoli. I also have my guacamole here. I did a turkey roll-up, which I could see little AJ putting in yeah, some cheese there. Very Grapes, creative. carrots, and an applesauce. Yeah. So I think these are great options. And so they all do, all, for the most part, meet my formula. And so that formula is you pick a protein. So you both have a protein. Uh, Derek, inside your sandwich is peanut butter there. Um, you know, and if kids can't have peanut butter, you can do sun butter, you can do pumpkin seed butter, things like that. You've got the turkey. Then we're going to pick a plant-based fat. So we've got things like guacamole. Mole, we've got nuts. Um, dig right in. And, I know, it's and good, isn't it? We've got our fruits and our vegetables. Um, and so, you know, obviously we have something like grapes here and versus sliced apples. I like to go for something like a grape that is durable. You don't have to cut it, obviously, unless you have small children. Um, and that is going to still be in the same shape when it comes lunchtime at school. Mm, it's not right. going to get smashed or It's not going to get browned brown. and smashed or soggy or anything like that. Um, and then the sandwich you actually picked, Derek, is a homemade version of everyone's childhood favorite, an Uncrustable. And it, the problem I have with the store-bought version of Uncrustables is they're loaded with sugar. Right. They don't offer a whole lot of nutrition-wise. Mm. What do you think? They're so good. We actually love Uncrustables at our house, too. I do, too. But here's the homemade version. We can do that by cutting down the sugar. Right. So this homemade version has more protein, more fiber, two nutrients we really want to get in at lunch, and less added sugar. So we make the jam, I have some right here, with just grapes. You cut them up, boil it on your stove, and they reduce down to this grape jam here. We actually have some if you want to try to make some. Yes, let me try to do it. And by the way, thank you for doing grapes. I'm not a huge fan of strawberries, but I love a grape jam or jelly yes. with peanut butter. And what I like about this, where we're actually using the grapes, so you still get those nutritional benefits, the potassium, the vitamin K, things like that. And so literally all we're doing is just putting it in water and letting it boil? You don't even use water. Oh! You just cut up your grapes and put it in a pan, boil them down, the juices kind of release, um, and you're good to go. Leave a little bit on the edge there. Okay. That's all, you're, and you're not adding any sugar you're or pectin adding. or gelatin or anything nope, to it? Just nothing. grapes. So put, wow. I'm put, put your, my other one on top here, right? Yep, and then take a press. You can find these cool little presses on Amazon, super easy. Okay. And just give it a good, a good press down. Use that muscle. Yeah. Did I do Clever it? Clever little I idea. And they come in different shapes. And now you've got this higher protein, higher fiber. Oh. Look Cute little sandwich with no added sugar and the nutritional benefits. Still get a serving of fruit in there with your California grape. I still I can't get it. over the fact you made this jam and it's only grape. Listen, while Courtney's cutting that up and trying it, let's talk about some of the packaged snacks. We yes. talked earlier about the sugar content that's sometimes hidden in these snack bars. Right, so just like we were talking about with these sandwiches, you wanna look for bars that offer protein and fiber and not a lot of added sugar. And so you need to read the labels, pay attention. Um, I actually, these Nature Valley bars are some of the favorites at our house. They have very little added sugar. I think it's like five or six grams. I also like these um, keto granola bars from Monk Pack. Norma, I'm not saying like put your child on the keto diet, but I think it's important to remember keto is more of a marketing term these days. Sure. And so when you actually look at the label on those, they're a great source of fiber and protein. They don't have um, artificial sweeteners in them, things like that. Um, and then obviously want to steer clear of things like fruit snacks and things like that. I know. We're such a, we get in that pit of fruit snacks. It happens because they're easy. The kids love them. I try not to buy them, but sometimes I fall into that 
into yeah, that. Yeah, and I mean, you know? a good fun treat for a kid, like every once in a while, there's no problem with that. And, right. You know, and it's if it's a small package in their lunch and it helps them feel comfortable, then it's serving a purpose. But we just want to make sure we're reining that in and not doing too much added sugar at lunchtime. And thinking of the nutritional value right now, when everybody's kind of still trying to get on that schedule again, we want to make sure that 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 lunch is very nutritional to to stop the crashes. Right. Yes, and actually be something they want to eat because you know we can kind of have a lot of control at breakfast yeah. at home, but then once they're there at school, it's really what you've given them and then their ability to comfortably eat that in the, the school environment. So, And Mary exactly Ellen, right. before uh, before we let you go, the, the variety in the takeaway snack packs, you say variety is key to ensuring your child doesn't get bored. Yeah, so mix it up. Now, I do give a little caveat of if your child is one of those kids that wants the same thing every day, then we can do that. Um, there's another great example um, of a snack meal. I like these kind of snacky type meals because it allows for a little bit of everything they love, um, you know, depending on what you have at home. And let them kind of, it's a great way to let them get involved in the process. And it looks as well. cute too. And colorful as well. Always great choices. And uh, Mary Ellen, it's great to see you in studio. Yes. Thanks likewise. for bringing in all these tips. And we're going to share Mary Ellen's full guide for packing healthier school lunch on our website. Of course, that's HoustonLife.tv. Also, thanks for lunch. Yeah. I know. This was so good. delicious. Happy to help. <laughs> all right. Switching gears now. Joe Sam is standing by with a way we can help give back and support our furry friends. Hey, Joe. Yeah, because you got this National Dog Day, and what better way to do that by bringing in some beautiful dogs into your family. We have Spiral and Yell here. We're going to be telling you about them and introducing you to their personalities when we come back here on Houston Life. You can already see they're playing around. They're having a good time. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back here to Houston Life. You know, we're celebrating National Dog Day here at Friends for Life. Look, and I think I found me a friend for life, too. We have Spiral here, and we also have Yale. <laughs> He's giving me kisses. Yeah, I think we found a great friend for life here. <laughs> Jessica, we also have Yale here. They're looking for that loving home. I think he wants to go home with me. I think so. I think I think that Spyro is very into you. So tell us a little bit about their personality. Sure. So they're both high energy, as you can tell. Um, He's about a year old. Mm -hmm. Spyro's about a year old, and Yale's about eight months. So he's still a puppy, but he's a big puppy. They're some big babies. That's what they are. Yeah. We love them because they both are also friends. So they just finished playing around and having yeah. a great time here. What's really cool about this time around for Friends for Life is that you guys offer curbside delivery. So you're making it really easy for people to come and pick up their forever friend. We are. Our entire adoption process has gone virtual. So it's super streamlined, super easy. Um, and then when folks are ready to meet the dogs, they can. Uh, we come on by, we set up a meeting, and then they can also meet them at our gala coming up in October. So we're going to have some VIPs there. Oh, Very yeah. important pups. We also love it. And, you know, of course, not just Spiral and Yale are here, but we also have some more videos to, for you to see some other dogs that are up for adoption, too. When we talk about them being up for adoption, you guys work really hard to make sure you find these dogs a loving home. And I think that's really important for you to match up everyone's personality to that forever family. So talk about how you do that and you tell people about each one of these pets when they come in. Yeah, so we get to know them really, really well. We have a huge behavior team. Um, and then we get to know the humans and we see if it's going to be a good fit. Um, and then our sleepover process gives you kind of a trial period. So that's a week long usually. So um, folks can try it out, see if the personality fits. He's <laughs> loving it. Ready. He's loving it right now. <laughs> really quickly tell people where they can go for the website to see more of the pets that you have up for adoption. Not just the dogs, but you have kittens and, and everything else. Rats even we as do. well. Oh, we do. <laughs> uh, folks can find all of our adoptable animals online at the website friends, the number four life.org. All right, and we're going to continue to keep celebrating National Dog Day here with these two lovely dogs as we send things back to you guys in the studio. I think I'm going to take them both. I have the energy. <laughs> yeah, I think I have the yeah, energy please, to keep yeah. up with both of them, right? Just load them in your truck. <laughs> we support back that to decision, you guys in the Joe. studio for now. Oh, Sounds spiral. good. And I've been on their website. They do have so many adoptable animals ready so to go cute. home. And I like the way the interview process goes both ways, you know? Owners have to be interviewed as well. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a way for you to become $1,000 richer. Sounds good to me. As we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a preview of what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. 
Courtney and Derek, tonight on ET, we're with Kristen Stewart. What she's telling us about playing Princess Diana. Plus, only we're in the studio with pop hit maker and one Republic frontman, Ryan Tedder. And Denise Richards returns to guest co host. You don't want to miss that. That's tonight at 6 30, right here on KPRC 2. Now, stay right there because Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Live, do you need cocktail ideas for your Labor Day weekend celebration? We'll have two easy and refreshing recipes to help bid farewell to summer. And it's time for the Houston Live prize wheel. We spin for you to win great prizes like Landry's gift card, luxury staycations, and even that $1,000, y'all. We haven't been able to give it away. We keep adding extra $1,000 spaces to our wheel to, you know, hopefully enhance, you know, the possibility that someone will win it. I think tomorrow's the day. I'm not spinning, so somebody should hit that. I will spin the wheel. A lucky viewer will win, hopefully, $1,000 tomorrow. Oh. But in the meantime, that does it for us today on Houston Life. Let's send it over to Andy and Christine for the news at 4. Hey, guys.